Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing MXGP 2020. We are here for round one of our championship in Matterley Basin, using Matt Grant and the Geben Van Van Rooy Yamaha racing bike. We await for the grid to drop, and our MXGP career mode is underway. Race one here in Matterley Basin. It's a little bit damp, no sign of rain as of yet, but for the time being it is rather damp. Well, as long as a little bit of sunshine comes on, this track might dry out a little bit, making the surface a little bit more easy to ride on as Clement de Salle takes the first hole shot of this season. Jeffrey Hurling's on the left-hand side as Grant goes around the outside, then tries to chuck it up on the inside of Clement de Salle, but didn't quite get it into there. Now getting onto the left-hand side, shoving it into the side of the Kawasaki. The Yamaha looking pretty strong so far into fourth gear, going into fifth, potentially drop it down to third, get over the big jump here and land it quite nice, then get back onto the right-hand side for the Yamaha's tight and nimble movements, going really deep into this particular corner, get into that particular berm as well, I find going into that berm really chucks you into the corner. Got to be honest with you, I do find Matterley Basin is one of the most difficult tracks on the calendar, and I do rather enjoy this track no matter the challenge, but of course being at home in England, in the south of the country, down in Winchester, is Matterley Basin. It is a really, really cool venue. Of course, we just had it here in real life just a couple of days ago with Tony Cairoli taking the Grand Prix victory. Now, Clement de Salle is getting away at the front just a little bit as we make a few minor mistakes there into the right-hand side. Difficult corner to navigate. Got a little bit of a supercross style here, going across a couple of jumps. Nailed them correctly, and we should get right onto the rear of the number 25 ahead of us. Clement de Salle doing a grand job in the lead right now. Get onto the right hand side as he kicks up a lot of dirt there, chucking it right into the face of the Yamaha behind him. As we now get a nice tight apex here, getting into the burn, we're going into the lead for the very first time. Grant now leads, how long can he hold it for? Not that long into this particular venue now. Of course there will be two races in this particular video, but of course the Grand Prix itself is going to be on short, so both races will be having a short amount of time. Grant now has daylight behind to Clement de Salle, so we'll see whether Clement de Salle can fight back and take away the chances of a British home victory. Would love to do it here in Matterley Basin. I've only ever won once here, and that is in uh, just earlier on. I think I started the career mode and then had to restart it because, of course, we decided to do the championship on it. I was playing career mode by my lonesome, but now I'm playing this in a championship mode, so it's a little bit different, but still can be career mode. And can you believe it? It has just started raining. The heavens have opened here. This is a different situation now for a rookie such as Grant. It's difficult to see the water go onto your visor. It's, the track is going to get slippier, it's going to get muddier, it's going to get heavier. How will he respond when getting under severe pressure from Clement de Salle? And I do believe Tim Geyser and Glenn Coldenoff are just a little bit further behind. And of course all that battering against the goggles, battering against the fairing and sort of the on the helmet as well. It's going to be rather difficult for a young man to maintain focus and this wonderful, wonderful Matterley Basin circuit. The gap is somewhat oscillating behind. Geyser, de Salle and Coldenoff battling it out does help Grant out quite a lot, but for the time being, the lead is teetering around a couple of tenths of a second to a couple of seconds. We're just going to see what we can do now into the middle section of the track as we make our first mistake there after leading this Grand Prix, as now Tim Geyser's into the lead temporarily as Grant then chucks it back up on the inside of the Slovenian. Brilliant stuff there from Grant. That's how you got to do it. you got to retaliate quicker rather than later. Now, Tim, guys, as you know, an amazing talent. And you better believe Bush comes to shove. He'll be right there battling it out with Grant if he needs to. He's only half a second behind now as Grant tries to get into some sort of rhythm, into that little tiny bit of a tabletop slash rhythm section. A little bit different to the style of Monster Energy Supercross, but that same sort of uh, p placement and positioning is very similar to some of the tracks in uh, Monster Energy Supercross. So we run it a little bit wide there, trying to nail the tight line. The tight line certainly helps as Yasconis now gets ahead of Clement de Salle. And Yasconis has now got the best of Tim Geyser as well. Is Yasconis on a bit of a run now? Is Yasconis going to be the man to beat? Is he going to be charging through and grant as Tim Geyser fights back? This is what we need. We need them to keep going at it 120%. As we make a little bit of a mistake there going off the track, but it's quite all right. We didn't get penalised for that one. This one now to make, make a nice tight apex, getting a little bit wide there onto the right-hand side. Shout out to the marshals having to stand here in this rain. It'll be very, very, very cold now as Grant sets us off for the final two laps. It's usually Cairoli time as Geyser dives up on the inside. It's now Geyser time, I guess. Whoa, as he got a little bit out of shape there going into the right-hander. But Tim Geyser is into the lead, and I can't get any power on without this bike slipping and sliding. There's just no grip. Look at the gap that Geyser's got now. He seemed to be held up 
behind Yasconis and getting in the battle with Clement de Salle, but he is leading this one quite comfortably. We're going to have to respond very, very quickly. As oh, my lord, Yasconis dives up on the inside. The number 27 beating the number 461. There's the big fella, the 6 foot 5 Lithuanian, dived up on the inside with his Husqvarna. He certainly didn't hold any prisoners. And I tell you what, he's the last guy I'd want again to a fight with. So maybe I just let him get through and we can chase him down as this race progresses. Of course, race one to finish third place would be a bloody brilliant job. So as long as we can maintain some sort of pace as the rain is really bucketing it down right now. No more spitting, no more little bits of water. It's definitely a full load of rain now. Get your umbrellas out if you haven't got them already as we'll get into this another innocuous part of the track. We're going to do the around the outside of the big jump there because I don't really find I can maintain much speed as we get a nice bit of wheelie there up the hill. Nice bit of exit as well there, but we're still holding on to third position as things stand, but with two laps remaining, or at least one and a half at this point, the right foot comes out for Matt Grant, left-hand side, the left foot out for the other one, so we now get into some sort of rhythm for this particular couple of sections here. Nice double jump there, nice little landing there as well for that one. Let's try and get back at Yasconis if we can, but at this point, I think uh, the lead being 2.5 seconds Yasconis, and a further 2.5 seconds up the road for Tim Geyser. This one might be over. Now, quick mention as well, uh, guys. Thanks for voting on the poll the other day regarding MXGP 2020 and, of course, Monster Energy Supercross 4. I do intend to doing more videos of both of these games because I do love them very much. We make a little bit of a mistake there going on the berm. A bit of a uh, error on my part, and we did lose more and more time to Yaskonis ahead. Tried a different line there, and I don't think it's helped as much as I wanted it to do. But uh, you've got to try different lines because you really don't know how things are going to go. And I tell you what, the rain is absolutely bucketing it now. Any worse, it'll be torrential. Got to do what we can now and just try and stay within ourselves. Six seconds slower than the best lap of the race set earlier on. Not sure who by, but it certainly wasn't us, I don't think. As Wow, what a move from Clement de Salle. De Salle diving back up on the inside. Brilliantly done from the Monster Energy Kawasaki team. As now, oh my goodness, Jeremy Van Horbeek is now involved. The number 89 diving around the outside, then up on the inside, holding no prisoners as well. We have been beaten up in that first sector. I really struggle in that first couple of corners, but there you go. Can we get back ahead of Jeremy Van Horbeek? He's going to... Oh, he's pushed me wide! That is an aggressive move I ever did see one. The marshal was certainly rearing his flag then, expecting me to go down. And now Tonus has taken over into fourth position. And where is Jeremy... Ha oh, Jeremy Van Horbeek's behind us now. The man on the Honda. He got pushed back due to that incident a moment ago, of course. As he now dives up on the inside of Grant. So he's fighting back once again. Let's retaliate into the right-hander. Nice and deep onto the brakes. Chuck the foot out and then balance ourselves around. Beautifully navigated there. That is exactly how you do it. Use this as a guide. Once you are beaten, retaliate, respond immediately, otherwise just suffer in silence. So we're trying around the outside of the big jump once again. I'm not sure where Van Horbeek is, but he's making me nervous, I won't lie. He is certainly probing for my fourth position, and I don't want to give it up. We did have the Monster Energy Yamaha rider ahead of us in Tonus, and he's still there, but he's a blur in the distance now because he has just shot off with Clement de Salle just a little bit further ahead up the road. Of course, he is going to occupy third position for the time being, and Tonus has actually got four seconds on us, and it's now Jeffrey Hurlings behind us on the Red Bull KTM. Not sure what's happened to Jeremy Van Horbeek, but at this point I couldn't care less, because he was very, very aggressive, as Yaskonis has just taken the lead. Oh, and Geyser fights back. Who's going to be the victor here in Matterley Basin Race 1? Of course, don't go anywhere because we still have Race 2 coming up in a moment's time. So if you haven't done already, like, comment and subscribe if you're enjoying the video. Because, of course, it does help the channel out quite a lot. And it helps me understand whether you guys want to see more of this particular content. Nice big leap there as we'll get into our favourite section there. Nice tight apex there as well into the burn. That's how you got to do it sometimes. And you're going. It's got ahead of Tim Geyser. Yaskonis, the Lithuanian, wins here in Matali Basin. Tim Geyser in second place on the Honda. And third place is Monster Energy Kawasaki, Clement de Salle. Grand finishes in fifth. So top job for the Lithuanian. Yaskonis wins with Geyser and Clement de Salle on the podium. Tonus, Grant, Paulin, Hurlings, Koldenov, Krevelin and Jeremy Van Horbeek finishes off the top 10. Decent result with the Yamahas, there's a lot of them in that top 10. But the Husqvarna finishes on top and the only Husqvarna in the top 10. 
We're back at it for race two, waiting for the grids to drop, and we oh, we went a little bit too early there. That is going to compromise our speed going into turn one, but we might be able to get a nice tight apex. There's a little bit of carnage going off there. Tim Geyser, will he take the whole shot? He does indeed. Yes, Gornis tried to fight him, but was unable to do his grand dives with the inside. Once again, leading in this Grand Prix. Geyser will try and fight back, but Grant strong on the brakes. We know he loves to drop it down into first gear and just chuck it into the berms. Exactly what we did there, and exactly... That paid off once again. We've tried that a couple of times, and each time we have been quite successful. But now it's time to get our head down and focus on this Grand Prix. Focus on race two. We need to take a victory. If we can take a victory, we might even finish on the podium standings. Of course, race one finishing in fifth place wasn't the end of the world. It was a decent result. Once the rain came down, we sort of lost our confidence a little bit and lost our way. But right now, since it's a fully wet track... We're already in the mode, we're already in the zone, we've had the experience, and this time I'm not going to be as eager on the throttle. I think I might have been just accelerating a little bit too much, a little bit too aggressive, and being a little bit too strong on the old right wrist. So let's try it again this time, with being a little more gentle, just being that little bit more relaxed on the throttle. Of course, we, we finished race one, the pressure is gone, we're all right now, we just need to focus on the task at hand. And with it being a very, very short race, a sprint race, if you will, we have a great chance of just leading at the front, chucking in the fast lap times, and staying out in the lead. Now, of course, I'm not sure exactly who it is behind us. I've not seen on the graphic yet. I, would, I think I missed it a moment ago, but I do believe it's Tim Geyser. But right now, we're not really that bothered. As something's happened behind because there's a bit of a gap developing. And, of course, we'd be a fool to look behind as we need to focus on the race ahead of us. It doesn't really matter what's going off behind us. We'll see the pit board. We'll see the graphic come up on the screen. And something has happened to the guy in second place now. Grant is leading this one extremely comfortably, and we could be chucking in some pretty fast lap times, but I do feel a lot more competitive now and being rather gentle on the acceleration. You can see the difference in the way we're getting out of the corners. We were getting bogged down and the rear tyre was slipping and sliding. Now, not so much. We've got a nice rhythm going, we're focusing on our pace, and there it is, leading the race with 50 seconds of race two remaining until the last two laps will be put on the pit board. I'm feeling pretty confident right now. I'm really enjoying this one. I only ever won once or twice in Matterley Basin, and I would love to win again here in the home GP. Granted, it's quite far down south compared to where I am, but still, it's home. It's uh, wonderful British weather. <laughs> of course, typical British weather, but I actually like the rain. But we go into the very tight apex there once again. Look how beautiful that entry and exit is. Gentle acceleration, smooth braking, beautifully done. I am finding that dropping down the gears myself in this one is making a massive difference as well. Now, I usually play semi-automatic, and I still do here. I let the game do the auto upshifts, and I do all the downshifts. And I tell you what, dropping it into first and second in some of these corners is making a massive difference. We very rarely go over the fifth... Uh, fourth gear in this one so we'll continue to push forward anyway but I'm liking this style I'm liking this smooth rhythm we've got going now we're looking quite confident we are looking a lot different compared to race one this could certainly be a race victory in just the second race and I can tell you what that's nothing to scoff at certainly not in the best MXGP class there is to offer I'm the Monster Energy Yamaha beautiful bike beautiful team Beautiful track and beautiful weather with beautiful commenters and beautiful subscribers. Everyone's beautiful in this particular channel and in this particular video. Getting into this rhythm section now. Monster Energy Supercross-esque as we mentioned earlier. And we still have a very, very comfortable lead. I'm really enjoying this one actually. I've got to say it feels so good to be back on MXGP 2020. I do feel I've neglected this game for quite a while. Monster Energy Supercross sort of took the headlines and took the spoils for the channel, but it's good to see both games are back in action and will be featured heavily on Muddy Mondays from now on. Also, I do appreciate that the following for these particular games are a lot smaller compared to the likes of Ride 4 and MotoGP, but nonetheless, guys, I love making content and I really appreciate that you guys, whoever it may be, whether it's a small amount of subscribers or a small amount of following, compared to a large amount. It still means a lot to me for you guys to check it out, so thank you very much. But right now, we're getting across the line. We're going to be two laps remaining as we are dominating here in Matterley Basin. This has been well worth it for the British crowd. They'll be happy to stand there in the rain as long as we get that British winner dominating here today. So you've seen the sign on the top left-hand corner of your screen. It says two laps to the end. We only need to hang on for two more laps. I don't think this rain is going to disappear at any point, and honestly, I'm quite happy because I feel like I've got a, such a great rhythm. The right finger is rather sore, 
because in, in MXGP 2020, I'm not really full throttling at any point because of the track conditions right now, as we allegedly avoided that obstacle. I think that was very unfair. I would have rather have slowed down a little bit, but back to the void you go and appear just in a moment's time. And I think Tim Guys is going to be close enough to possibly lunge sooner or later. He has been closing me down for quite a while, and after that mistake, that's probably giving him all of the motivation he needs to attack the British rider. Surely he's not going to try and steal it away from us here today. He has a lot to lose now because he can win the, the whole Grand Prix if he finishes in second place. With Yaskone is finishing uh, the race one in top spot. Guys have finished in second place. And here if he finishes in second place once again. That is a perfect Grand Prix result for him. And of course Tim Guys are leading the World Championship in real life right now as well. So not unheard of for the 2019 World Champion to be leading in the MXGP standings after however many races it may be. Now back into the rhythm section in a moment. We'll get a understanding of the gap in a moment. It's 2.2 seconds to guys are behind where we could potentially be seeing that familiar old story Yamaha versus Honda how many bike games how many bike series in real life as well do we see Yamaha battling it out with Honda the two Japanese manufacturers and I guess you can make it three Japanese manufacturers with the uh, Kawasaki I don't think that's too far behind in this particular race as well well let's see if we can develop some sort of pace now develop some sort of lead to get away from Tim guys to make a little bit of mistake into that particular berm do rather enjoy taking this tight apex towards the final part of the section of this track. Nice big leap here to land it into the decline of the corner, but we didn't manage to do it there. Don't want to land it on the incline, It'd lose all speed and momentum. But across the line we will go, we're going to be about three seconds slower than our best lap which was set earlier on. Guys is across the line, he's not improving his lap time, but someone behind him improved over to a 2.14, 2.23. And of course we have now one lap remaining. The penultimate one was a disaster. We should not make it the same. The final lap has to be absolutely perfect from here on out. We've passed the pit. They're all waving. They're cheering us on. The subscribers are in the grandstands waiting for Grant to take the victory. As we'll get into the nice tight apex once again. Beautifully done there for Grant. How are we looking? There's the sense of it's 2.6. It went, wow, the gap was that large. It just flew off the screen. Guys, oh, I think guys has been swallowed. I think Tim Guys has been swallowed behind. He might not be leading the Grand Prix after this one. He might not even be leading the World Championship standings. Is Grant impervious here in Matterley Basin? Is he going to do the business? Is anything going to go wrong? I don't think so. Just make sure that's not a commentary curse. Let's get into the left-hand side. A nice tight berm once again. A little bit on top of the berm there, but it's quite okay. We're still going at some decent amount of speed. The right finger is beginning to get a bit sore on the right trigger because I'm not, I'm not full throttling. But I'm not gently, just a little bit throttling. I'm in the middle, it's sort of teetering, and it is doing work. It's certainly doing overtime right now on the right finger. This is the only game I've ever actually felt that. Or maybe I've just because I've played so many bike games and so many different triggers and throttles. But this one is beginning to get stingy. But we're going to try and make a little bit of a leap here. Not perfect touching the top of the bump there. And again, once more, once more again, but we managed to nail the final part. But I do think we have a gap that is large enough to us to sort of relax a little bit we don't need to be going 120 percent like we're usually doing we can just sort of take it steady a little bit we're into the final couple of corners not that long left in the lap remaining we should have this one in the bag and this is going to be a fantastic result by my calculations we should finish on the actual podium for the grand prix itself a third place second place i'm not sure which one it's going to be but i'd be happy with either to be honest with you we aren't going to win it because of course finishing a fifth place was not going to be enough for the points wise but this is going to be it only one more corner navigate or at least two this one's done get onto the right hand side of the tire and it's going to be victory for the home hero across the line we go victory goes to grant I'm not sure he's finishing second or third we'll find out in a moment's time so Grant wins with Clement de Salle and Aminas Yasconis gets that Husqvarna back onto the podium once again. Tim Guys are missing out after trailing in second place for so long during the session. Somehow he misses out on the podium. A look at the championship standings. Yasconis wins the Grand Prix and he's now three points ahead of Clement de Salle and Grant who finishes on the podium. But guys, as always, thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note, guys, thank you for watching, and ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. 
consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Doctor Ace video.